why I became a registered member in the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum and peace be unto you. I'm Sister Latasha Muhammad. In this video, I'm going to talk to you briefly about why I joined the Nation of Islam, why I became a registered member in the Nation of Islam. Thank you so much again for watching. Here we go. When I was, uh, let's see, like seven or eight years old, I remember thinking about God. Like, my mom always told me about God, and, you know, my family members always told me, you know, to believe in God, and so they were Christian, so I, I was what they were, um, Baptist, which is a branch of Christianity, and, you know, I, I just, accepted that you know I'm, I'm young I didn't know nothing but I did know something at that age at that age I I knew something was wrong with who who I was being told God was I didn't like going to Sunday school I didn't like going to church and the reason is because what the preachers preached as a young child it didn't make sense it didn't make sense to me it just did not make sense to me and especially the pictures of the white jesus and you know the pictures of the white angels all the angels are white like, I knew something was wrong with that, even at seven and eight years old. I knew something was wrong with it. I knew it wasn't right. And I remember being in Sunday school, and I remember reading about Jesus and having feet like burnt brass. And it always made me question religion. Like, it always made me question the God that I was being told to believe in. It always made me question it. And it also made me doubt it because I'm sitting here, you know, as a young black girl, knowing that it's, Jesus is saying that he's black in the Bible. He has feet like burnt brass or burnt copper. And so copper and brass is, is already dark. But if it's burnt, then it's black so all the pictures and stuff like it just didn't make sense and as a young girl I I knew about slavery and you know a little bit about what our people had had been through in America and I grew up around white people I did I grew up in a city that was totally like mostly white people very few black people here and there and so I growing up in school in elementary school in middle school in junior high school I always felt and so I'm going to school with all these white people I never felt like I fit in anywhere like I never you know had the guys who liked me and my hair was always different and I never felt like I belonged and they they made sure to make me know that I was different and so from a young age white people and growing up around white people I noticed that you know something this isn't right like I, I noticed that there was no connection and I noticed that they made it a point to make me feel a certain way. And it was all throughout high school, all throughout high school, all throughout elementary school and junior high. Like, I remember this. I remember. So I, I, I always looked at white people side-eyed. I always did. And so what happened was, see what happened was, um, my brother, he invited me to a moss meeting. He invited me to a mosque meeting and just like uh, maybe a lot of you, someone has invited you, hey, come to the mosque with me, come to the Sunday meeting with me, come to the Wednesday meeting with me, come to a Friday night study group with me. My brother, he asked me, 
he said, I, I want you to be my guest at the mosque. And I'm like, what's the mosque? <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I was like, what's the mosque? And he said, oh, he just was like, you gotta come, Tosh. He was like, you gotta come, Tosh, you gotta come. And I was like, all right, you know, so I didn't question him anymore. And um, so I went to the mosque. I went to the mosque and I I never seen black people like that. Like I saw the sisters in the garments and I saw the brothers in the suits and the bow ties and the sisters were sat on one side and the brothers were sat on one side and I saw saluting the flag. There was a flag that was being saluted and I just was like, wow, this is, this feels good. Like I was welcomed immediately without the minister even starting. I just, I felt good. Like I felt good in my body. I felt good in my spirit and, um, yeah, I sat down, I was seated, and um, and there was a check procedure when I came that, you know, you have to, you know, you're getting checked when you go to Muhammad's mosque or study group. You're, you're going to get checked. Um, I didn't have a problem with that at all. I, I wasn't attitude-y or anything like that. No, I was very accepting. Like, I was very like, okay, this is new. Let's see what this is. And so, yeah, so I got sat got escorted to my seat and and brother minister started teaching and oh my god I feel like like I was so like it felt so good to me I felt high I did and it felt so amazing to me like I never heard a teaching that taught me that I was God and that I was favored in the sight of God like my black skin is glorious my beautiful hair is amazing. Like, I had never heard anyone teach about black people like that. And I just remember feeling like, like, like I could exhale. Like, this, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I belong. And I immediately, like, I didn't have any second thoughts. I didn't have any doubts. I, nobody could tell me nothing. Nobody could tell me nothing to doubt this teaching, to doubt this way. And so at the end of the lecture, uh, the brother minister asked if, who's here for your first time? Me, I'm raising my hand. Who's here for the first time? And if you feel what you have heard today is good for our people and would like to join on to your nation to help us in this mission stand up i stood right up so bold and proud <laughs> and i walked down the aisle and i got the information on continuing the process of joining on to the nation and it was the best thing that i've ever done best 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 i'm I'm so happy to Allah that he allowed my heart to be open to it and not skeptical and critical of it. And yeah, it's where I belong. It's where we belong. And, and then later I kept coming. I kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. I was a part of the Nation of Islam. I finished the processing to become a registered member in the Nation of Islam. And that's a big deal. In order to become a registered Muslim in the Nation of Islam, there is a process that you have to go through. It's a, um, it's called processing class. So you process and you get taught the beginnings of things, the beginnings of our teachers and and who we are as MGT, who, who you are as FOY, if you're a brother. And then you have uh, student enrollment and actual facts, actual facts about the universe and, and questions about who is the original man and who is the Caucasian. And <sighs> I just remember my processing class 
and I remember reciting. So when you register, you recite the student enrollment and you recite the actual facts. And after you successfully recite and you write a letter to the Savior, you write a letter to the Savior. And this, la this letter has to go through an inspection. This letter is stating that you want to reclaim your own. You want to join on to your own. And so I did that. I wrote the letter and I studied and I recited and I became a registered Muslim in the Nation of Islam. And I'm just so happy that I did because I've been exposed to Seventh Day Adventist and Jehovah Witness and, um, I, you know, I'm not interested in anything else and I there are other things I know about this is the uh, this is this teaching is the only teaching also that I know of maybe you know of other ones that teach you how to live a long time this is that's one of the things that this teaching teaches you that stands out from all the rest you you are taught how to live a long time you are taught what to do and what not to do to live a long time to stay looking young. To stay looking young. Fasting, the importance of fasting. And not just for like a spiritual reason, for physical health too. Mental, emotional, all of it. There's emphasis placed on what you're eating, what you're putting inside your body. So this teaching goes in on that. Also, this teaching, I, I never, had been in a church meeting or heard the reverend speak about how amazing and beautiful and wonderful the woman is. In the Nation of Islam, this is the only teaching that I know of that uplifts the black woman. That uplifts the black woman. We don't walk behind our men and our men don't beat us either. We are not Arab Muslims and we do not follow the Arab way. We follow the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is our Savior and our Christ. That, that, that is what the Nation of Islam is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is our Jesus Christ. He is yours too. He is the Jesus of this day. He is. And, ah, uh, yeah, I'm just so happy. I would not be the woman that I am today, had I not accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I would not be. I don't know where I would be, I don't know who I would be, but this teaching has shaped and molded and groomed me into a beautiful sister. And I, I'm just grateful and I'm thankful. And let's see what else, and there's so much to learn, like, there's so much in this teaching, it's not just the Holy Quran and it's just not the Bible because we study both books we have study guides multiple study guides on self-development and improving yourself and developing yourself evolving yourself becoming the God that we once were like we have so much to learn and I just I'm just grateful I'm just grateful so yeah, I, I became a registered Muslim in the Nation of Islam because it felt so good to my spirit and my, my mind and my soul. Like every fiber of my being was like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, this is it. And so yeah, I just wanted to share with you and I wanted to share it with you because maybe a lot of you out there have gotten invited Maybe some of you have thought about going and, you know, investigating for yourself or just checking it out for yourself. I say go for it. Go for it. Go. Go to the mosque. Go on a Sunday. Go on a Sunday. You will be checked. Yes. We're not having no shootings up in Muhammad's mosque. No. Don't come with no weapons. Don't come with drugs. If you do, they'll be confiscated and given back to you at the end of the meeting. But yes, go. I mean, do yourself a favor and just check it out. Tell them I invited you. Sister Latasha Muhammad.
<laughs> invited me so I thought I would come and see for myself and you know people people just talk they talk see for yourself don't take nobody else's word see for yourself and if when you go you don't feel comfortable standing up at the end to join on to your own and become a registered member in the Nation of Islam, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming, listening to the lectures, keep coming until you feel like that that's a, a step that you wanna take. So you can keep coming and keep coming and that is, that's wonderful, that's great that you're getting the knowledge, that's great that you're getting the information and that you're learning all about yourself. However, it is different than when you register. It is different. Um, so yes, I just wanted to say that right fast. And um, yes, if you've never been, go. Go to the mosque, go check it out. Go see what we're about. And another thing that was just so good and felt so like a breath of fresh air to my body is everything that I learned everything that was taught is the truth it is the truth the hardcore truth but the truth I'm trying to tell you and the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaching scholars have never been able to prove him wrong scholars scientists they know the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They know. They've never, never been able to prove the Honorable Elijah Muhammad incorrect. They've never called him a liar. Same thing with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is with us today. He's alive and in power. No scientist, no scholar can prove the teachings wrong. Or tell the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that he's a liar. None. No one. And another thing about the teachings and why I loved it so much. Why I became a registered Muslim. Because there is no one on this planet Earth fighting for black people. I'm sorry. No. We're not in the same basket as everybody else. See, people like to put us in the same basket as white people, put us in the same basket as our Mexican brothers and sisters, put us in the same basket of the Asians. We're not in the same basket. Our plight to this country, vastly different than anyone else's in the world. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he is the only black man on the planet that I know who is sacrificing to fight for black people in America. Only. Only. Yeah, and I get it, you know, you have your leaders and you have your chiefs and you have your, you know, of, of, you know, the other groups and stuff, but none of them have the guts nor the power to stand up for an entire nation of people. No disrespect. Just truth. Yes, I stand with the Nation of Islam. I stand with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I am a registered member of my nation. And I pray to my God. I don't pray to a God that was given to me by the Caucasian. I, I don't. I, I knew there was a problem with that when I was seven years old. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about finding or locating a mosque, a Muhammad's mosque or study group in your area, please send me a message. Let them know Sister Latasha Muhammad sent you. Okay, so yes, I invite you to run to Muhammad's mosque or study group. I'm Sister Latasha Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum and peace be unto you.